Hi there, and in this video we are going to look at creating some comic book panels using Photoshop. Um, obviously this is a sort of introductory um, lesson, uh, for mainly for those of you that have never used Photoshop before. Those of you that have, you may already be quite familiar with the tools, um, you may not. Okay. Um, so, um, the first thing that we are going to do is to create a new sort of scene, a new file. Okay, so we're going to go up to file, go down to new, um, just sort of stick in there one sec, and let me select new. Um, we will see we get our options dialog box. So I'm going to rename this as comic book panel page um, experiment. Okay, so obviously for this you are going to be required to experiment with different layouts for your um, for your sketchbook, uh, not sketchbook, sorry, for your comic um, within your sketchbook or with through digital formats and put on your blog. Um, and uh, as part of that experimentation you should utilise the um, methods and tools and tips that were covered in the sessions um, today. So with your document type we can go to international paper when I know we're going to be working to A4 um, so we have our width which at the moment is in millimeters we can change that to um, pixels or inches or centimeters or so we'll go to centimeters and we're going to keep our resolution at 300 just to give us as much sort of detail as you want so that is 300 pixels per inch so for every inch there is 300 pixels and uh, we're going to stick with an RGB color profile because um, ultimately our pages are going to be displayed on a screen um, as they're going to be sort of animated. So red, green, and blue are the three small little dots and lights, LEDs, whichever um, that make up your monitors and your screens and your displays. And um, it's through that additive process, so the addition of color of these three colors, red, green, and blue, that we get the presence of white. Um, so um, we will explain what CMYK is in the session, but for now we don't need to worry. So um, we're going to click OK, and that's brought up our scene. So just to sort of talk about uh, the, the setup here, um, across the side we've got our rulers, our, our guides, our guide ruler, yep. And on the left hand side we've got our um, toolbar, our tool set. At the top we have our menu with uh, multiple options within it. Here we have our additional options, um, which usually change depending on the tool we have selected. So if I select the select tool, you can see it's changed. On the right here, we have some additional tools that we've sort of be using over the next few weeks, um, such as the brush settings, uh, you know, our text settings, etc. Then we have our color profile, our color swatches here, and at the bottom we have our layers panel, which is probably the most important thing, along with our other tools. So, first things first, um, we never sort of work on the background layer. Um, a couple of ways we can get rid of this is we can just um, unlock it by double clicking, click OK and hide, or you could just delete it, you can't delete its last layer, sorry, or you could just um, yeah keep it invisible. So, um, what this means is we're not able to draw on this at this point in time because obviously it's hidden, we can't see it. Um, so what we're going to do is create a new layer to draw on. Okay, so I'm just going to call this um, background uh, white, and later on we'll fill this in. We'll fill this in in white, and uh, that will be sort of our safety background or black maybe. So yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll put I'll put black actually because it most probably will be black. So uh, with that selected there, um, what we're going to do is um, create a new layer. And in this layer, we're just going to call this um, top right box. Okay. So basically, what I'm going to do is, in fact, we'll start with top left, not top right. Um, and what we're going to do is draw a box around here um, using the selection tool. So I think we had the selection tool here. Um, what this allows us to do is to make a selection over the image or scene that is presently on the screen. And if I go and drag and hold that around there, you will see we get these small little marching 
um, ants as we call them and this is the active area that is selected within the, pack, within the page okay so with this selected um, what we can do is we can go to edit and we can go to stroke and with t a 10 pixel width I'm going to change the color of this to black and I'm going to go to the inside of the selection and I'm going to click OK and if I push Control and D so that's Control D it will deselect so that selection is no longer active okay and as you can see we now have our first panel which is looking pretty cool so um, again we can go through and um, we can add more panels in um, just by dragging, selecting and um, putting those in there um, so again what we're going to do is make that selection but what I want to do is create a new layer okay um, so this time we can create a new layer I'm going to rename this as top center um, box and I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to stroke and I'm going to keep it on the inside same settings as before click OK now the reason that we're working on multiple layers is we want to keep with a um, non-destructive workflow so if I start to say add if I add some more panels on the same layer so let's say we add one in here and let's go to edit stroke OK and do the same thing down here Let's wait for those yellow and purple sort of guides to come up. Should lock it in, edit, stroke, okay. Um, and say I then think later on, oh, perhaps I want to move um, this over, perhaps I want to move it out of the way, perhaps I want to reposition it. And I've got these boxes attached to it, which could be beneficial but it, and, and help, but it might not, okay. So um, what we tend to do is keep everything on a separate layer. So I'm just going to push Control Z which is undo. If you want to do multiple steps you need to hold Control, Alt and Z otherwise it will only undo, it will flip between the last step and the current step continually. Okay, as you can see there. So um, if I just take that back, Control D to deselect and actually if we look at these two they probably won't even match up in terms of their size and their width so as you can see they're not equal. So I'm actually going to delete that so I'm going to take this box and I'm going to take it down to this bin. So with a new layer we've got the sticky pad down here I'm going to create, um, I'm going to duplicate this layer and one shortcut, of one shortcut way of doing that is to drag this box down to the sticky pad okay and you'll see it comes up here with the top left box copy and it's placed it on top of our previous box. So if I just try and select that and if I hold shift it will sort of snap that out. And I'm going to change that now to top center box. Okay. So that's looking cool. And um, I'm not sure if we're going to get, have enough room to get an, an additional box along here. I think we've probably um, used quite a bit there. So I'm going to move that right across and move that right across and if we just duplicate that and pull that in yeah we, we've I've probably made that too big there so um, I'll tell you what we can do we can keep that width there and we can have us we can have a, a couple of smaller boxes in the middle so for our center box um, we'll have it's going to delete that we'll create a new layer and we'll call this top center box A. So edit stroke. Okay. To or top center box upper. And we can duplicate that and create top center box lower and we can just delete the copy from the name 
and then we'll move it down we'll, we'll just select that and we'll move it down like that okay so um the next stage is to start thinking about some of the other tools so if you're going for quite a sort of um, vertical and horizontal um, box layout which is perfectly fine um, the rectangle tool um, as well as the rectangle section tool is really useful now maybe um, you actually want to create something with a bit more dyna dy dynamic There's something a bit more dynamic within your scene um, within your layout so there's a couple of tools that we can use for that so um, the main one that we're going to sort of use today is the polygon lasso tool okay and a polygonal lasso tool so if you can't see it from this menu I've got the magnetic lasso tool selected there if you just hold the left mouse button or hold down your tablet um, over this it will eventually bring up a new menu option okay and then from this what we can do is take this out and as you can see we can move that in if we left mouse button click and drop move we can actually put that in any place we want now if I hold shift and start to do this you'll see that it snaps okay and you can see that it's just snapping around the scene okay so I'm actually going to um, bring this down um, at 45 degrees and I'm going to bring it to around here I think should we say there so what I'm going to do is try and pull the top line here and I'm going to use this as a sort of reference to get the same width there so if I hold up 45 degrees till I'm roughly in line with um, that panel above I'm going to hold that and then obviously if I keep holding shift it will move it across for me and then again what we need to do at this point is just move it across so it's almost almost there um, but that's okay and we can sort of edit that a little later on um, and what you see there which you probably just missed so let me just undo that and I'm gonna do that again is when um, we are complete so I'm just gonna hold shift move down um, probably I'm just going to draw that down so it's a little bit more accurate. There we go. And we're just over that little bit there. Cool. And I'm just going to move this up slightly there. And probably a little bit more. Just a tiny, tiny little, tiny, tiny bit. There we go. And you'll see as we get there, as you watch there, if you look next to this icon, you'll see that little circle pop up that means it's going to close and will be a um, whole selection okay so I'm going to push that and that's looking pretty cool now you can see that there's a plus side there and that's because I'm still holding shift what this means is I can actually add to this selection so if I wanted to I could um, draw in um, another piece okay and it will add it in now if I wanted to remove that, I can push ALT and start to move that around this piece. Okay, and we're going to get that little circle again, that means it's there and it's now disappeared. Okay, and um, what it almost also means is I can add to this if I wanted to. Okay, um, but again, we don't want to do that, so I'm going to push Control Z. So with this selected, I'm now going to create a new layer. I'm going to go call this center diagonal and I'm going to go edit stroke and click OK and now you'll see that that's appeared on the inside there okay so um, within this next panel I think I'm going to have the background sort of open so the, the, the background the background image will actually occupy this and these panels are actually going to sort of build in so what I'm going to do at this point is now start to draw um, alongside this going down so I want to sort of line this up again okay so I'm just trying to be really exact here um, this might not always work 
Okay, I'm just going to string that along to the top there, bring that back up, and just till I can get to our start point. There you go, get that circle, and I'm going to create a new layer again. Go to edit, go to stroke, and I think you've got an idea of what this pattern um, is. In, you know, is involved is involved in this pattern now. And I'm just going to push Control D to deselect. And I'm going to call this um, center right. No, sorry, center left. And I'm now going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to hold Shift. Go bring this right down to the bottom here. Bring it straight across. Bring it straight back up. When the circle appears, call make it a selection. Go edit, stroke, and OK. And Control D. And the bottom line is a little bit. There are they are a little bit off. Um, and we can probably just erase that or shift it up, edit it later on. Um, but again, um, we're just going to call this one center center. Um, And finally, at the bottom, um, I'm going to have one sort of long running panel, maybe. Um, again, these these panel designs sort of depends on, you know, again what is happening in your story, um, where you want the reader to follow, what angle the movement is at, where are the eyes looking, what is the layout, all the things we've sort of discussed when we've looked at other examples in today's sort of lesson. So this one. Again, I'm going to go to stroke, I'm going to click OK and create a rough layout. So, again, we do have some bits that are, sl that are slightly off, mainly this bar here. Um, and again, we can sort of go in and edit those, um, which we can do. We'll, do. we'll do some now, actually. We'll do some now. So, what we're going to do is I'm just going to rename this bottom. Okay, panel, bottom box. You may call it a panel, it's up to you if you want to call it box panel or whichever. Um, I'm just going to add box onto these. I'm going to work with box. And um, in fact, just before we do that, I just want to show you something else before we go in and edit these. And um, it's about grouping these into a folder. So this might be our first test, but I actually might want to change a couple of pieces. That's that are in this section. So if I select these, so I'm going to select the top one, hold down the shift key and select the bottom layer. At the bottom here, you'll see a small little folder icon. So I'm going to push that icon and it will put them automatically in a group. And you can see that by pushing that down arrow, we can reveal and hide them. We can also hide their visibility on the main window by pushing the eyeball. Um, I'm just going to call this experiment one okay so for the next layout um, I might want to actually I might want to actually just edit what's on here so I can duplicate this folder oh I didn't do that so duplicate it so I take it down to the sticky pad icon and you'll see it's now made a copy I'm gonna call this one experiment two now for this one to hide it um, I'm gonna lock it and then I'm gonna hide it okay which means we no longer influence this layer so we go to the padlock icon up here to bring it back. If we want to go back to editing it, we can push the I, make it visible, unlock it. Until then, we lock it and we hide it. So with this um, of our experimental experiment two window, I actually want to change, say, some of these top these top pieces. So I'm going to hide those. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and delete them. So I'm going to take all of these down to this trash can at the bottom right. I'm going to create a new layer. It's going to put it down, and for this one, I'm actually going to build some diagonal lines going across. Okay, so um, I'm going to go back to my polygon, or so, and I'm going to try and select that again as close as I can to there. I'm going to hold Shift, and this one I'm going to pull all the way up. Okay, and I want to sort of pull that to around there, and I'm going to go for one sort of dot in there. And this time I'm going to trample around the same length across. Okay. And then back down. This gives us this really big open window. 
and we are sort of forming around here and it can hurt your eyes after a while and as you can see now we've got that opened up so I'm going to go to edit stroke and color black 10 pixels on the inside okay and there's that there. I'm going to rename this as um, entry point. So it's the entry point because it's the entry point window, if you remember from the lesson. So from our entry point, um, I'm actually going to bring this bar now further up, okay, to the hit here. And that's going to involve some editing. So let's assume that I've added some more windows in and I just want to edit this piece. So by pushing Control and Plus, I can zoom in, and minus, I can zoom back out. You can also do this by selecting the magnifying glass down here, and we can change its plus or minus there. Okay. So, um, with our layer, you can sort of see we've had a bit of an error there, so obviously that will need to be fixed up later on. Um, what I'm going to do is basically delete this line here, and add... Um, a new one in okay um, so one way of doing that would be to get your selection tool and to select uh, these points going across so I'm actually just gonna take that up there and bring that there and with the layer that we want to edit so if we remember we were center diagonal I'm going to go to the eraser or I could push E and I'm going to just click and delete that away okay so push control D and so that's done now I'm going to scroll up because I know I want to add into this section so if I just move up slightly there we go we now have um, our window complete there we can see everything we need so with the polygon lasso tool I'm going to select the outside now we stroked the inside which means our line was traveling at this very, very outer point. So I'm going to select that there. And we're just slightly off, so we just want to go on the inside of that slightly. There we go. And I'm going to bring that up by holding shift to roughly where the outside of this line is here. And I'm going to bring this down. We're just slightly off there, so I'm going to do control. I'm just going to hold shift, take it down a little bit. There we go. It's a little bit, a little bit, probably too much there, but that's okay. And this time I'm just going to take that in. We're going to have to select those up, and we're just going to have to go to edit, stroke, click OK. Control D, so we are a little bit off there as well, so we can sort of just take a little bit away from there later on. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to erase this line. So I'm going to get my brush back. I'm going to resize that while going up to here. Definitely don't want it on 1700. Definitely don't want it on seven either. That's probably too small. So 25 is okay. And I'm literally just going to go in and just delete that panel. Now later on, I may actually rework these okay because obviously they are going to be a little bit bobbly so I'm going to control Z and we can zoom right in on that as well if we want to really sort of perfect where are we at let's keep it going and yeah there we go we can just sort of eat away at those little bits so we get it exactly right going too much there, so have to be a bit careful. There we go. Right. So, um, some bits obviously need a bit of tweaking, but overall we've now sort of started to edit um, these panels. Now remember, these panels are guides. Um, we are going to sort of do layer masking, um, which will make that a lot more accurate and give us the chance to edit this later on. Um, but for now, where you are going to just simply be creating different designs and experimenting with different designs and getting used to the some basic features of Photoshop, um, don't put that pressure on yourself to create the greatest um, piece of work, okay? Um, I just want you to practice and um, be experimenting with uh, 
you know this tool set okay so again we can sort of just fill in this corner piece here and we can create a new layer again and edit stroke and okay control D and I've, I've got a feeling actually we probably edited the oh no we did we added it to the right layer good we had the layer selected so now we've got the panels and if you actually look we've got two different designs two very different looking pieces okay um, so what I want you to do this week is to be experimenting and creating different layout designs, studying those artists and designers that we've looked at, and making sure you are applying that to your own practice. Okay? So you have these experiments and obviously have put them onto your blogs. So that's some basic tools. So just to recap, we've looked at using layers, um, adding them and grouping them into folders, renaming those layers. We've also used the Summon the Select tool the selection tool and the um, polygonal lasso tool okay and we've also um, added strokes to those selections in order to create our panels so quite quite a little bit was covered today so um, good luck and I will see you in the next